Recently, two ground-based radio telescopes detected a pulse of radio waves, and it was pretty intense. This event astonished astronomers because it was the first time a fast radio burst, FRB, had ever been detected so close to Earth. But where does this signal come from? What caused it? Astronomers think they have an answer. Do they? Keep watching the video to get to know more about fast radio bursts, what they are, and where they come from. I promise you won't regret it. Strange signal coming from the Milky Way detected. First of all, you probably want to know what a fast radio burst is. Radio bursts, as the name suggests, are intense bursts of radio emission. But why do we call them fast? Well, it's simple. They have durations of milliseconds. Actually, they tend to exhibit the characteristic dispersion sweep of radio pulsars. The first FRB was discovered in 2007, although it was actually observed some six years earlier in archival data from a pulsar survey of the Magellanic Clouds. It was dubbed the Lorimer Burst. The limited dynamic range of the instrumentation prohibited an exact measure of the flux, but it has been estimated that several 100 bursts could occur every day with a small probability of detection. Scientists have dozens of theories about the causes of fast radio bursts, from colliding black holes to alien starships. Many theories suggest the bursts originate from neutron stars, which are corpses of stars that died in catastrophic explosions known as supernovas. FRBs usually come from outside of our galaxy. But on April 28, 2020, two ground-based telescopes detected an intense pulse of radio waves. Located just 30,000 light-years from our planet, the event was firmly within the Milky Way and it was, to all intents and purposes, almost impossible to miss. It was detected by the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment CHIME, and the Survey for Transient Astronomical Radio Emission 2 STAIR-2. Until this point, as we said, all FRBs had been observed outside our galaxy, and because of that they were very hard to study. April 2020's discovery was notable for two reasons. The first one was the most energetic radio blast that astronomers have ever recorded in the Milky Way. The second one, scientists are now closer to determining the origin of FRBs than at any point since they were discovered. The first fast radio burst was detected in 2007 when scientist Duncan Lorimer was studying data taken by Australian telescopes. A problem that arises while studying fast radio bursts, aside from most of them being so far away, is that they are fast. They are so fleeting. They are bright and instantaneous flashes of light. They are ephemeral. Even if they can release as much energy in a few thousandths of a second as the sun in 100 years, they've been and gone in the blink of an eye. That's why studying them is so hard. Usually when a major astronomical event happens, as in the case of a supernova, astronomers focus one or more different telescopes on it in order to have a lot of different data to analyze. But the ephemeral nature of these bursts removes any such opportunity. But astronomers never give up, and now they have a piece of pretty good knowledge about fast radio bursts. All of this knowledge was made possible by the study and detection of FRB coming from outside our host galaxy. Here's a recap of what we know about them. They last from microseconds to milliseconds, Thousands of these bursts occur in the sky every single day. Most of them come from billions of light years away. They come from very small sources, no more than a few hundred kilometers in size. The most likely sources of this kind are neutron stars, since they are both very small and very energetic. This is pretty much what we know until now, because the fast radio bursts discovered in our galaxy last April could now help us to confirm or adjust these theories. Thanks to the work that involved the data of other telescopes monitoring the same patch of sky, observational evidence is now suggesting that the origin of FRBs is very likely a magnetar, a type of young neutron star born from the embers of supernovas with a magnetic field 5,000 trillion times more powerful than Earth's, thereby making them the universe's most powerful magnets. But how did they come to this conclusion? Before finding out the answer to this question, 
Be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel, clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Well, we must consider that a magnetar is known to emit high energy electromagnetic radiation, such as gamma rays and X-rays, the most powerful radiation in the universe. Both of these erupt in short-lived flares. That's why a magnetar is a good candidate for causing fast radio bursts. Also, this latest fast radio burst, which was dubbed FRB 20428, was found to have originated in the Valpecula constellation, which, guess what, happens to be hosting the magnetar SGR 1935 plus 2154. The first detection of X-rays from that sky region came the day before Chime and Stair 2 discovered FRB 20428 by the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. Other telescopes were also found to have observed an X-ray burst from SGR 1935 plus 2154, crucially at the same time as the fast radio burst. These included the Konos wind detector on board NASA's GGS wind spacecraft and the European Space Agency's Integral Space Telescope, both picking up an X-ray burst at the moment Chime and Stair 2 recorded the FRB. Now that we explained what could be causing FRBs, Let's take a look at the instrument we use to discover and detect such radio signals. The telescope, as we said, is called CHIME. It is based at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory in Canada. Its work could be divided into five parts. The first one is collecting radio signals. A good FRB hunter, in fact, has to be sensitive to radio signals. Something peculiar about CHIME is that there are no moving parts in the CHIME radio telescope. Instead, as the Earth turns, Radio waves that are emitted by celestial objects are received from a narrow stretch of sky that runs from the northern to the southern horizon. The second thing about CHIME is that it has cylindrical reflectors. Radio waves are collected by four semi-cylindrical parabolic reflectors aligned north to south, each one measuring 66 feet or 20 meters by 328 feet 100 meters and lined up in a row. With the northern sky scanned east to west every 24 hours, this gives a 200 square degree field of view. The third part of the job is focal assembly. What does it mean? Well, you know radiation dives in our telescopes as polarized radiation. In CHIME, it is received by 256 dual polarization antennas that are lined up above the reflectors and spaced 12 inches or 30 centimeters apart. They are sensitive from 400 to 800 megahertz in both linear polarizations. The fourth part is, of course, processing the data. Each microsecond of data results in 2048 amplified analog samples being processed by an electronic system called the F engine, which is safely housed inside two shielded 20 foot, 6 meter shipping containers. The signals are digitized and then converted into a 1024 element frequency spectrum. Last but not least, the fifth part of CHIME's job is to make a spatial correlation. The data is sent by optical cable to the GPU-based X-Engine housed in two shielded 40-foot shipping containers. It's a 1000 processor high-performance cluster that can figure out where the signals are coming from and create an accurate sky map. This is very useful to astronomers because their main purpose is to find what is causing the FRB and where in the universe. Anyway, just to be sure that CHIME has done its job well, the scientific community turned its attention to the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, FAST, located in southwest China. Luckily, and I would add not surprisingly, the Chinese telescope detected a radio burst in the direction of FRB 2004-28-2 and put its location around SGR 1935 plus 2154, the magnetar we were talking about. What does this mean? This means that the FRB came from the direction of a known magnetar within our galaxy, and the radio burst happened at exactly the same time as an X-ray burst coming from the same magnetar. This, of course, is a clue as to how magnetars produce FRBs, but the scientific community is still trying to work out what it all means. The importance of this discovery is twofold. On one side, CHIME has proven to be an essential tool. Based at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory in Canada, it's a novel radio telescope, and it has a high mapping speed 
thanks to its 200 square degree field of view and broad frequency range of between 400 megahertz and 800 megahertz. Most radio telescopes aren't able to pinpoint the location of an FRB well enough to associate it with a known object. Those that are able to localize FRBs with great precision usually look at small patches of sky and can only observe a patch about the size of the full moon. They are not able to monitor several known magnetars at once. Chime, however, observes an area of about 500 times larger and it can therefore monitor all magnetars located in the northern sky every day, allowing us to detect a burst as rare as this one. It combines its localization capabilities with the large sky area, and that has allowed us to both detect this burst and associate it with a known object. On the other side, as we said before, this was a huge discovery because it happened inside our galaxy and could therefore help us to gain more precise knowledge about what is causing fast radio bursts and how they're ejected. This means we'll soon have a more precise description of our universe. This is probably the beauty of science. Every discovery starting from the smallest one to the biggest one is important and contributes to our description of the universe as a little tiny piece in a big puzzling puzzle. Every time we accommodate a new piece, we're happy. That's why humans love science. That's why you love watching Insane Curiosity. Thanks for watching, everyone. Do you think this new discovery will revolutionize our understanding of the universe? Let us know in the comments below.